Hey, so let me catch here again, and this is going to be a new update to the Dark Worlds deck. And, um, I, you know, I currently got it now. I didn't feel like, you know, being dumb and actually, like, doing, you know, actually trying to use my webcam to show you how the updates are. Just because my camera's fucking. It's not that good. Sorry. It's not that good. So, instead, it's damn cold in here. Uh, I'm just going to show you here through YGO Pro. Uh, it's, I've had a couple of pretty big changes to it, uh, a few interesting tech choices, however, uh, I currently feel like this is the best, even though I always say that, uh, I think this is definitely a step forward in the uh, evolution of Dark World. So, we're just gonna go through it, I'm kinda gonna dig into it a little dirty, and then right after I'm just gonna show replays, just cause, uh, I did a lot of live, uh, battling, pretty much all day for like the past oh man you don't want to know how long but um just see how it worked out and I think I won every single one but I usually win every single one however well, <laughs> well, well yeah we'll get that whatever okay so obviously three Grapha you know how you win he's awesome you can't kill him unless if you DD crow him and even with that you still have options but of course, you're gonna run three. There's no no uh, no nothing about that. So I'm just gonna go over threes. Snow searcher, really good. Uh, if they're gonna hit anything that's like actually likely, I don't well, I don't think they're gonna hit dark worlds ever because uh, uh, they just haven't. There's been no really uproar for it. But anyway, that was my phone. Okay, we're gonna hide that. Anyway, uh, so yeah, there's uh, you know obviously three snow no. No way, fans or buts about that. At three bow for more searching. So, on for the uh, one-off dark worlds. We got the one silver, one gold, and one beige. Uh, there's some guy I know that's running two beiges, but that's inconsistent. And you know, it seems more consistent. You can't really do that much with beige. You can't virus it. You can't really beat down with it without gates or really with gates. I mean, 1900 is not bad, but 2000 is even better. So. Even though, you know, you hate to run over people with snow, sometimes you gotta. And like I said, it's never a virus target, and it's not really a beater. And yeah, you can do loops, but uh, in a replay, I, I, I actually did. I could have brought out four graphes, probably even more, with uh, Silva, but I don't brought three. But whatever. And uh, I know a lot more people like Silva over gold for mirror match. And that's perfectly, you know, that's fine. It's just personally, if if this card said up to two monsters your opponent controls, I probably wouldn't run it. But the fact that it's cards, I really like because even in that mirror matchup, they're gonna be setting in a lot of cards for drag down and such, and even for card destruction and you know, and other cards that they know that you're gonna try to mind crush or try to um, you know, if more you know spells and such. And this lets you pop all those important spells that they drop like. Freaking Monster Reborn and all the other crazy stuff that you have to set whenever you're using Drag Down and the like. But I mean, obviously, you want to Drag Down Gold, but you know, if, if you're left to that or if the dealing, you know. I still like the option. And you know, really, when you get down to it, it's not going to matter too much. But I will admit, Silva is freaking hurts. Uh, two Tour Guide. Tour Guide currently is probably the best in Dark World just because it gets Brow. Not only can you just pop it for a graph, but with a nice, uh, you know, with gates, you get a good, like, what is that, uh, uh, 43, you know, like, 4,300. Pretty good, just over there, you know, half. And place that you can, that you, the options that um, Tour Guide gives you for the really good level 3, uh, rank, sorry, rank 3 Zs that you can use is just ridiculous. And then the one trance. People run two, I don't like it. I mean, Trance is an awesome card, and it's obviously far superior to Raven. Hopefully, everyone's figured that out by now. But, and I mean, I love opening Trance Snow, and then, you know, if I want, I can just Trance Snow for Gates and then use Gates. So, even, and it's okay if I pitch Snow because I already have Trance there, so I'll just get it back in my hand. So, it's not really too much of a threat to go for such an early Gates and Banish and such with an empty graveyard. But, Sorry, I had a text. Anyway, so what a lot of Dark World players complain about is either having so many monsters and no discount outlet, or nothing but discount outlets and no monsters. And the thing is that I've 
personally ran into when I had to deal with too many trances or too many beige or guys that just special themselves and really don't do anything and you don't really plus that much off of a special summon if you're not going to bounce it for Grappa, obviously. And if you're going to, I mean, yeah, you can take a, a bet with dealings and it's really bad to Kate's trance or anything like that, but if you have like a normal array of monsters, however, I mean, even though it's nice to start with Tour Guide, it'd be really nice to dealings, you know, just your Dark Worlds. And if you start with like a half and half, the likelihood of you actually drawing to the monsters that you want to discard are a little less likely and more likely you're going to get everything else. So, I mean, obviously, I guess tr 2 is, I mean, it's an interesting, I mean, it's obviously a good idea since Trance is an awesome card, but I feel just for at least this, the monster lineup that I have right now, it just kind of clogs, even though it's a really solid card and a discount, 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 discard, discard outlet. I, I just don't care for it uh, that much, and I like to just keep it at one. Because, like I said, uh, people who are running like two beige and two trance and two tour guide, uh, it's just going to lead to more dead hands. And even if you do have a discard outlet, you're not going to plus as hard as you can because. Really getting beige on the field off of a off of a drag down or off of the dealings, unless if you're popping for Grappa, is pretty much worthless. And unless if there's some really big trance beige rank four play that really gets you going, which there really aren't. Maybe my stroke would be the only legitimate thing that I would actually waste that on, especially since when you overlay, you lose the trance effect, you get the banish, but. Primitives, it's whatever. So uh, the obvious three: the uh, the gates, the drag down, the dealings, and the upstarts. And now we're gonna go to the one-offs. So of course, heavy storm. Uh, it's almost kind of funny because most of the time I actually have to heavy my own gates. But it sucks that sometimes you have your own gates, but you can always search for more, or maybe if you have more in your hand, then it, it works. And hmm. A lot of the times when you have gates out, they don't really expect you to heavy. So if you have a play where you don't really need gates, or if you use gates and then you heavy kind of thing, if you're only like not special summoning plus, depending on the background that you're afraid of, etc., etc. But nevertheless, you know, obviously you need heavy. Could you? But uh, one day piece. Okay. So I seen. I know at at three, this card was getting a little popular with uh, Heretics because they didn't really have one uh, turn one plays. And Dark Worlds is an interesting, like, we really like to go first, and we really like to virus and hand destruction and mind crush everything, but we don't really have too much field presence. And the one thing that I really didn't like about first turn virusing was even if I knew the most, like, the, the, more pl the most uh, pluses I could get off of, like, spells and traps or off of monsters, you'd still have an open field. And I've opened plenty of times where I've just one day a piece, special out something I could virus, first turn virus, and even though I don't really have anything to defend myself as a way as monsters, I, I still I, I don't have any threats. And it's really great to just like, if you get a one day a piece trans play or one day a piece uh, anything, um, really any play, it's, it's this card I've just had. It also makes your deck a 36 card deck, technically, since that's what people say with a whole upstart. I mean, sure, it's kind of a plus for them, but of course you can always swing for Grappa, then one day a piece, and then, you know, Virus on their turn, and they really can't do much about it, especially when you're calling spells, or if you're calling traps. Like, you know, I've actually had a couple of times where, you know, you one day a piece, you get something that you can eradicate or out with, you call spells, they can't do any spells, they set all their traps and then you heavy storm them. And you already know what kind of traps they have so you can know which, if you if they're worthy to pop or if, uh, you know, no plays are made. And we, you know, we'll get to replays about that. Cheerful Coffin, I still really like this card. I don't see it in a lot of people's deck profiles. I find it to really be helpful. Um, sure, you, it's, like I said, it's technically a minus four, however, it's or at least up to a minus four, it still helps your consistency rolling. I've had plenty of times, I mean, it, it just helps with those clogged up uh, hands with monsters. I mean, I've discarded double grappa snow, and it pretty much just ended off of that because it's really difficult to come back from 
blowing up two back row plus a search for and you know you just keep plusing off of that so I really like to cheer for coffin uh but you know it's whatever dark hole of card destruction incredibly obvious uh foolish burial solid for just ditching your graphics and even late game if you somehow get all your graphics in the grave without foolish uh it still gives you options if you're running low on things to discard or if you wanted to if you had a nice monster born play and you'd rather get a snow you could Foolish the snow, or if you don't want to draw into any other monster, or maybe you have a dead tour guide, that always helps. Monster Reborn, obvious. Okay, so this is where we're going to get into the trap lineup, which I completely changed. Originally, I ran for the triple um, Reckless Engine, and slowly I kind of realized that the meta doesn't really call for the triple Reckless, because honestly, it's really only good in a slower meta, I kind of feel, because obviously the meta, especially once Elemental Dragons, probably all the Evil Swords, all, all, well, I mean, Evil Swords is actually not too quick, they're, they're just, uh, you know, we're not going to get into that, anyway, but, um, the meta has changed, and Reckless is really only good if you get two off, if you just get one, it's almost, it's, it's hardly worth it, sure, you get into your outs quicker, However, I think I supplemented that with the one day apiece. Sure, it's just you know one card for considering of drawing six, but in this meta with people just like going ham and going crazy, you need actual back row protection, not just relying on mind crush and viruses to protect you personally. But I mean, you know, it's whatever. So in the way of traps, I just have the one mind crush. People are running two and three. It's inconsistent. Don't do it. It's really even though a lot of decks are searching, that still really doesn't help that much to have a mind crush because, yeah, maybe, you know, oh great, you get to pop their search, but then you still have any other monster you have to deal with. And really, it's only good whenever you get the drag down or the virus cards because that's really the only time you're going to get to see their hand. And, I don't know. It really helps when you go first, when you go second, or if they already did all their major searching. It's it's not as as good. I don't know. I just I just had I didn't feel like two was good enough. I kind of wanted more consistent and solid back row. So what I added was the two torrential tributes. Uh, I have all, all torrential tributes always been really good in dark world. Just since you don't really care if you blow up your grapher because you, you can just obviously recycle it back. But with torrential. I just kind of feel like, again, with how the meta is going, people are just going ham, and you can catch those people overextending, especially after, you know, if, if you clear your own field with a virus or something. You can easily bait out. I don't know how many times I just, I just love baiting out or chaining the torrential to, you know, the effect of someone else's special summoning another card, because they all do that now. Like a harpy, whatever, dancer, preacher, servant slut. I don't, I don't remember the name of that one card. But, you know, always chain to that, so then they just discard a card, and then they minus, and then they just don't really have any other plays, especially up against RPs, because then they can't really Icarus attack or do any of the other nonsense, and maybe they can Egotist, but I don't know. You just chain it right, and I, I like it. Personally, I feel like it's it's my personal, one of my favorite traps. This format, uh, I changed up the uh, two deck devs and one eradicator to two eradicator and one deck dev. Deck dev is still really good. It's practically a lance for Dark World when you're dealing with bottomless uh, D prison kind of kind of shenanigans that's been going on. Even Phoenix Chan, I think, could even get out break out of that one. But um, like I said, you know, if you're gonna get D prison, you might as well destroy your monster and get to see their hand, which again, you know, helps the whole mind crush, the check down, all that such. But yeah. Well, but and uh, pretty much even though deck dev is really good versus the mermail and even prophecy matchups, since it really just leaves them with high priestess and of course you know that's all they need. But again, uh, in the, the 1600 trick, but whatever. Anyway, um, pre pretty much just a mermail matchup is really solid, especially if you get a deck dev and destroy all their lower stuff and then mind crush like a megalo. And then usually they don't really have too many plays off of that. But uh, Eradicator is still, just calling spells is so great because it's hard to make a comeback without, you know, Monster Reborn, MSTs, Dark Holes, Heavy Storms, 
mirror matchup, it's broken. Even versus mermails who run almost like, you know, hardly anything, it's still really helpful. Of course, Prophecy, it, it's an auto win. Uh, Fire Fist, it's an auto win. It's it's just such a good card. And it's already got, it used to only be like a 50 cent card. And now it's already up to $2.50 or something like that. Which is, you know, not like super crazy like, oh man, Bear's up to like 60 bucks now. Kind of crazy, but you know, it's going to start seeing more probably side deck play I can see in the future. I know a lot of the decks are main decking it, but eventually people are going to counteract that. But honestly, it is just a really good card. Alright, so there's the deck. 40 cards. Really liked it. Okay, so we're going to go into the side deck really quick. So for monsters, just a one Raikou. Uh, I kind of wanted room for two, but. One's fine, you know. If I if I feel like I can squeeze in another Raikou, I probably will. Three MSTs, cause fucking macro. Um, the other Mind Crush, just for if it's a really search heavy, uh, you know, just versus pretty much the big three Mermail. Uh, pretty much, yeah, the big you know, Mermail, Fire Fists, uh, Prophecy kind of decks, and which I mean are most from. But however, I just really don't the consistency. I just don't feel it. Uh, return in a different dimension. Lulz, just don't even talk about it. The other deck dev versus uh, wind ups uh, and sectors, even even on graves, still helps. As long as you don't draw centipede, then you pretty much win. Um, what else is deck dev really good against? That's the thing. Deck dev hasn't really seen it's seen better days, especially in this meta where there's a lot of mid level bruisers and such. Oh, yeah, this is also like an instant win for sea heroes. Anyway, um, but it's still solid, you know, you never know what kind of matchup you need, and two is always funny. Two compulse, uh just getting over all anything that's when it's destroyed by bow kind of stuff. Uh, you know, Lance is a thing, but I still think it's a solid side. Uh one Dark Smog, just one. Maybe I'll get in two, but I don't have a second one, so I'm just working with it. Two Royal Decrees, you know, this is just like Raikou, three MSG, Royal Decrees is like all for macro top kind of stuff. Oh yeah, man. Uh goes and match. And rivalry, you know, just depending on what kind of matchup. Since all my monsters are dark fiends, I don't really care. Yeah, it hurts my um, well, these three cards all all hurt my uh, Z plays, but that's not really what Dark World does. Really, the only thing I'd be sad about would be like Zen Maze, uh, Levier, and uh, Heretic Sun Dragon. But these are just kind of staples. You know, you can side them into a lot of matchups, and you know, goes a match. Solid rivalry warlords, maybe a little more solid. It really depends on the matchup. So you know those are solid. And then for the extra deck, we got Stringent uh, under Gates. He can get to like 36, I think, with his effect, which is awesome. Because Gates just makes him run over everything, so he's like a super acid golem. So I, I almost want to just run two of him and no acid golems. Cause like, what's the point these days? Um, 110 tempo. Again, he gets 500 attack, and equips, you know, Zen mains killer, but under Gates being 2k, pretty good. But Levier, don't need to talk about it, I need to get a second one. Gigabril, uh, mirror match, and just uh, getting over Shiny. Yeah. Uh, 32 is really hard number for uh, Dark Worlds to get rid of, apart from going into a heretic play or, or, or pop. But, um, anyway. Uh, Leviathan Dragon, pretty obvious, just beat her. Acid Golem, you know, Acid Golem. Uh, for the rank fours, May Stroke, the best one probably. He's a thing too, 21 under gates, and he's got an awesome effect. And he works with all the other Jin monsters. Roach, because Fiend, and also pretty good. Uh, Tiramisu, because I have her, and it's Easter. Utopia, because it's freaking Utopia. Uh, one Volcosaurus, just because even though you don't really go into that much, when you have the opportunity and you can go into Volcasaurus, you usually want to because it's kind of broken. Uh, the two Heratic Dragons, which are really the only ones that I think are completely necessary of getting two of, since you can easily go into two in one game, no problem. And the one Galaxy Photon Dragon. People say, you know, I never really go into it, but I like to have it inside. I actually, I can usually get it out like once per tournament, and it's always funny. So I didn't test this exact deck in my last locals. Uh, I still was running the Reckless Engine and went undefeated on that one. So 
I'll have to test this one in the next one, but I can tell you that one day piece does work. Try it as a tech, and maybe try the tarantulas as a tech. So we're just going to go into some quick replays. So uh, let's see if there's actually some good ones. So here's an interesting one versus six Sam player. Uh, he had a pretty, uh, pretty nuts hand. You'll see because he's got, you know, he's got Kagashi Kagamusha cynicism. So automatically you can tell he's uh, got how you say the nuts. So oh, there's a little step button. That's cool. So I'm just hold on to that. Kind of not really. No, I wish you could have won that, but whatever. So I'm just going to make some, you know, drawing plays. I have the one-day piece, so I'm not really afraid of it. And what, what, what pops? Okay. Let me swap. Yeah, this guy's got, like, the nuts for hand. How does he have so many cards? Oh, yeah, because one-day piece. But, um, so, yeah, he's kind of got a nuts hand with Kizan, Kageki, Kagamusha, Asceticism. Um... I always just call spells blindly just because I never know what I'm going against or if I don't know what I'm going against. But I'd rather get spells, especially since I have the heavy in hand, so this is another thing I was talking about. I'm sadly only going to get the asceticism, but at the same time it's asceticism, so it's like, fuck yeah. Sadly, I couldn't get something crazy like a, um, a, um, what, what's it called, what's it called, what's it called? A uh, deck dev against 6 Sam, but yeah, 6 Sam's are really vulnerable to, uh, Viruses, blind viruses first turn. But yeah, so we're gonna go for this. I call spells. He gets his cynicism, which isn't that bad. So he's gonna set his solemn judgment and solemn warning, and get Sheehan out, which is an interesting choice. Uh, probably Beast would have been better. Could he? Yeah, he can go into Beast, right? It's, that's I don't I don't I don't play six sands. I don't play Beast. I'm pretty sure you just need. Oh, it needs to be one Earth tuner, one non Earth tuner, or non tuner or non. What? So yeah, just just work with me. Noob here with Beast. Just give me a second. Oh, so they both need to be Earth, and he had a win. So with Kageki, oh, because you need, uh, yeah, you need Elder to get into that. I think. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I guess you know six. Uh, that was the only thing. I think. Like I said, I don't really play six amps, so I want to know. And uh, he's gonna attack me for no reason, but again, that one day piece helps me prevent plenty of damage. And um, here he has some interesting plays. You know, he can you know, negate one thing with Sheehan. So, and I really want to get rid of this back row, at least force him to use judgment and knock down like, you know, half of his life points, obviously. So, we're going to see, uh, how about this do some step kind of thing? So, I just use gate effects, and I know I can't pop. I didn't know which one was the warning and which one was the judgment. And I was kind of winding up and trying to, I know I can run over the Shan if I have the chance. I'm not really afraid of it since, you know, just seeing my uh, my hand with the drag down and such. I really just want to kill this thing, so. I have he uses his whatever effect, which is fine. So I kind of expected that. And then upstart, and I drew into all three of my brows, so. That uh, kind of made me a little salty. However, in uh, Redemption, I got my uh, Dark Hole. He's going to solemn that since he already used his whatever effect, which is fine. It takes 5k, which is UC. And I'm going to summon that. He's going to use his effect. And now he has no hand, and he drew into his smoke signal. I still call spell. So at this point, he has really nothing he can do. I can always eradicate if I want to call traps again or something. But we can look. He's going to draw into nothing. I don't know if people actually run Dojo. Yeah, this looks like a good enough deck. I don't, I don't know exactly what they run. I feel like you need... Oh, no, he's got the other. Okay. Yeah, he wouldn't have been able to do anything, so... I get Graph out, and he's not going to be able to really do anything to a 3k beater now that it's already out on the field. And he's got nothing to work with, so that's the end of that. And YG Go is probably going to crash. It's gonna crash, yeah. Well, okay. Well, so it's gonna crash him just call it in there, so. There's, uh, you know, uh, yeah. I'm just gonna call it the end there. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I'll try to show some replays or something later. Great comment sub. Tell me what you guys think of the deck. I really don't think there's any more improvements. That I could have done. I, I really feel it's probably the most consistent. Uh, build, but you know, only time will tell, and dark bolts are nearly never that's good. So, whatever.
please. I'm going to go. Do the one. 